thyroid, um, benign thyroid disease is detected more mainly because people get tested a lot. Benign thyroid disease probably isn't any more common than it always has been because there's no environmental factors that should be increasing benign thyroid disease. But thyroid cancer is increasing a little bit. They've decided that um, a lot more cancers turn out to be genetic than we used to think. A lot of people are walking around with mutations in their DNA that predispose them to cancer and they just don't get cancer for a variety of reasons, but any little thing can tip them over the edge. So there seems to be a lot more genetic component than we used to realize. Um, but it, it's not enough. Something else has to happen. So um, and it's some environmental thing, and that's why they think the, the rate of thyroid cancer is increasing, because they think it's radiation related. So you're walking along with some subtle combination of genetic abnormalities that predispose you slightly, and then you get radiation or something, or just bad luck, you get thyroid cancer on top of that. Thyroid cancer has become much more prevalent uh, in all age groups. I usually see one to two new patients a week with thyroid cancer. There, there are certain issues which uh, are certainly associated with causing uh, thyroid cancer. The biggest is being radiation exposure itself. Uh, high dose radiation will kill thyroid cancer cells, but low dose radiation will convert normal thyroid cells into cancer cells. So if someone has uh, lots of x-rays done, uh, medical x-rays, dental x-rays, if proper care isn't taken, they can have overexposure to, to their thyroid. People who work near uranium mines or near where atomic bombs were exploded in the 50s, they can uh, still get elevated exposure of radiation, hence increased thyroid cancer. Uh, the Chernobyl radiation incident in Russia is an example of that. My name is May Dedek. Four years ago, um, I started feeling symptoms more like I was tired and um, my hair started falling and my skin was like super dry. The symptoms kind of got really worse, like I started feeling like a muscle aches and uh, I was just tired all the time. I could not get enough sleep, my appetite was like I would, you know, my metabolism was changing so I would gain weight and lose weight quick and gain weight quick. So um, so I did my follow-up with one of my physician doctor and uh, so she wanted to check the dysfunction of my thyroid. So the first, she did just blood work and um, and they diagnosed it with the hyperthyroidism, so which is like overactive thyroid. And um, the first like very really critical symptoms that I have, it was like increasing my heart rates. Like my heart rates were like 110, 150 in the resting uh, stage. So it was very, um, it was it, it was very overwhelming. Like I couldn't like you know like sleep. It would wake me up in the middle of the night thinking I have like a you know panic attack. Um, so the first blood work after right after blood work, um, she suggested for me to see the thyroid specialist. And um, so we did um, first biopsy. She suggested to do the biopsy. First biopsy results were um, they the way they. They diagnosed that was unidentified, meaning like that they find a nodule, which is just on my right side. They were saying like it was like a size of like a bean size of that was the nodule that was there. The second biopsy, they wanted to um, to find out is that nodule cancer. So the second biopsy results um, came out, and um, the way they explained it, it wasn't like a they were treating like a 50% that was a cancerous cells. It wasn't like attacking the whole thyroid. So what they did just pretty much remove the right side and now with my left side I only have left. And um, so they just now, I have to do every six to eight weeks, I have to do blood work to make sure that the, the balance is out. So and they will, they still, I still take, have to take pretty much medication. Um, so till this day, I'm still just taking very low dosage of the medication, so I'm really happy with that. So, and hopefully, you know, that's gonna stay like that, but we'll see. My name is Marlena McCabe, and I was diagnosed in 2012. Um, at the time, I was 13. Um, it all started around in February. I came home from school one day and was um, absentmindedly itching around my collarbone and I found a lump that I could kind of manipulate and move 
So I told my mom, and the next day we went to our pediatrician. She felt around my neck and gave me um, a little cup of water and watched me swallow. Um, she got a very worried look on her face and then left the room to go find another doctor. And the doctor came in, asked me to swallow again, and they both decided that it looked a lot like a goiter and that I should get an x-ray. So that night, my mom took me to Chandler Regional Hospital where I got an x-ray. And after getting the x-ray, almost immediately the x-ray technician said that he didn't think it was a goiter. So the next step was getting an ultrasound on that Wednesday. I got the ultrasound and the results were sent to my pediatrician's husband who was an ear, nose, and throat specialist. And I had an appointment with him the following week. And he did the same thing, kind of watched me swallow, felt around my neck, looked at the results of the ultrasound and decided that the next step would be to get a, a biopsy of the lymph node that was in, near my collarbone and to do some blood work. After the biopsy, we got a call from the anosin and throat specialist and got the diagnosis that I had papillary carcinoma, which is a type of thyroid cancer, and we set a date for the first surgery for March 20th of 2012. My first surgery was supposed to be about an hour and a half. It ended up being three hours. Dr. Rothman spent just an hour and a half on the left side because it was so enlarged. Um, he spent the other hour and a half on the right side and taking out lymph nodes from around my chest area. After my recovery period, I had my first iodine radiation treatment. Um, after that, um, I had some blood work and started seeing an endocrinologist. And we decided after some CT scans and a full body scan after the radiation treatment, that I was gonna have a second surgery to remove a few lymph nodes on the left side of my neck. After that, blood work showed that there were still some microscopic levels of thyroid tissue, so I had a second iodine treatment. I'm on a thyroid hormone replacement pill, which is what I'll be on for the rest of my life, and have since been having blood work and checkup appointments with an endocrinologist after that. I haven't had any treatment in over two and a half years. Throughout the whole process, doctors had asked about a family history of thyroid cancer or thyroid diseases, and the only thing that had ever affected anyone in my family that we knew of was a great-grandmother with a goiter. But other than that, we had no history of thyroid cancer. We had histories of other cancers, but none specifically related to the thyroid. My name is Connor riggs Boynton and I was diagnosed on the 31st of March, 2014. I was living in Perth, Western Australia um, from November, 2012 up until April, 2014. Um, and during that time I was serving a, a service mission for my church. Um, and then while I was out there, um, I started noticing that I, I got a rash. Um, started around my lips, um, and just under my nose and then spread to behind my ears and that sort of thing and then within a matter of about a week um, it was all over my body. So I had been tested for this rash, there was some blood work done and that sort of thing, they couldn't figure out what was wrong. Um, they gave me uh, all sorts of steroids and things like that and nothing was killing off this rash. Um, the doctor sort of said, alright you need to go get uh, FNA, a fine needle aspiration biopsy and need to get an ultrasound. Um, and that started the testing process. Two weeks later, um, on March 31st, I was diagnosed. And then uh, April 1st, I flew home to England, um, where my family lives. And originally, I went to my general practitioner, uh, so just the local doctor, um, and received a referral to a specialist um, named Mr. Reese Evans. Um, who's, who's an endocrinologist, a surgical endocrinologist. It was then another three days before my initial evaluation, and then I think it was about two weeks uh, before surgery, and they removed my thyroid, the, the whole thyroid, they removed about a three centimeter tumor, um, which had grown from about two centimeters to three centimeters by the time that they 
from the time that I was diagnosed to the time that it was removed. So in a period of about two weeks, it had grown a centimeter. Um, so it was beginning to get aggressive. And then um, they also removed 10 local lymph nodes, um, which they then tested, and seven of which came back cancerous. Um, after about a month and a half or so of waiting um, after the surgery, to heal and that sort of thing, including follow-up appointments and blood work and all that sort. Um, I then went and um, received radioactive iodine ablation treatment. Uh, so yeah, maybe about two months, month and a half, two months after that, I received a letter in the mail saying that all my blood work was good, um, that I needed to come in for monthly checkups after that for the remainder of the year, and then, but that uh, I was officially in the clear, um, that I was in remission. Um, I'm at the point now where I only have to do one checkup annually, one set of blood work annually, unless I feel like my medication levels need to be changed. And I know of three cousins with hypothyroidism and maybe one with hyperthyroidism. Other than that, there's no history of thyroid cancer in any blood relatives or anything like that. Nobody really prepares you for a doctor walking in the room saying, we can't figure out what's wrong with you, and then all of a sudden he walks in the room again a week later and says you have cancer. Um, and I don't think anything can really prepare you for that. It's definitely not something that I would wish on anybody. You know, I, maybe you heard something similar, but I had people tell me over and over and over again, oh, well, if you're gonna get cancer, this is the kind you get. And, and that was a little frustrating to hear that all the time. You know, they're not necessarily wrong, but I wouldn't wish cancer on anybody, because um, it, it raises a lot of questions you don't necessarily want to ask yourself. The overarching lesson of it all was that sort of we can do hard things and overcome difficult times, you know. Um, there's not really a hurdle that can be placed in front of you that you can't overcome and grow from as far as I see it.